Our gut reactions are the sum of all of our experiences and everything we've learned comes out often in an immediate emotional response. Just, that's wrong, that's right, whatever that is. That's the sum of all of your knowledge and understanding. And that's what we should rely on. Think about insurance, what is it? It's a promise to pay. You hand over hard cash in case something goes wrong. And we promise to look after you if something happens. We hope something doesn't, but you need us. My kids ask me that, and I say I talk to a lot of people. That's my job, talking to people. Because I don't, it's hard to explain when you're a COO what you actually do. You're the guy the behind the scenes that make the business work. You're kind of the conductor of all the different areas, but not in charge. Everyone else is in charge of their different parts of the business, but you're trying to make it all work. And it's really hard to do. You have to do it vicariously. You have to do it through others. And as the article that, that I've written says, you have to do it with the right values for people to trust you. You have to do it with transparency. You have to be completely honest and open so that all those different people who were relying on you for their business to work will, will work with you. Otherwise, you could be in trouble. There is no typical day. If you look at my diary, there could be 10, 15 meetings in one day. And it's all sorts of things. I'm in charge of all change, all operations. Uh, in charge of our future technology division. Um, I run one of the subsidiaries. I'm the chairman and CEO of the Hiscox Underwriting Limited. I am responsible for information security. I'm responsible for data quality. I'm responsible for our external suppliers. I'm responsible for all change and all projects in our business. So look at my diary and you'll just see every day is, is different. I work for Hiscox because of what we try to be. So we try to be a trusted insurer, which is a bit of an oxymoron. But we try every day uh, to operate in a way that our customers can trust us. Think about insurance, what is it? It's a promise to pay. You hand over hard cash in case something goes wrong, and we promise to look after you if something happens. We hope something doesn't, but you need us. And it's at that point when you can break that promise, and a lot of times insurers do. We try really hard. If we think someone should be covered, then we pay out. So it's not about the wordings. It's about the intent, the spirit of the promise that we've made to you, that we try to honour that every day. I think that varies as you go through your career. So when you start your career, you just want to prove yourself. You just want to see if you can. Whatever it is you said you're going to do, you have to learn how to do it, you have to do what you're told, and you have to get on with it. Then you start to get good, and you start to realise you can deliver. And then you start to deliver more things, and then you're motivated by making a difference. And then at some point that switches to, I can only do a certain amount of stuff. I need to get other people to join me and come with me, and then I can do more. And that's when you transition more to wanted to be a leader, because you can achieve more. You can do things more in the right way through others. And that's when your interest changes to motivating others and creating an environment that everyone loves working in and where you can really achieve the right things. Hmm. Successful leaders, is a, how to be a successful leader is an age-old question. And I think everyone has a different approach to it. There are obviously some key principles. Uh, the first one, you've got, to be, you've got to be the kind of person people want to follow. And that can be many different things. But I think of it in the sort of First World War analogy. If I jump out of the, the trenches and say, follow me, are people going to do that? It's as basic as that. And sometimes the answer is yes and sometimes it's no. And you've got to try everything you can so when you need them, they're right behind you. Uh, the key to that, actually, is to be yourself. 
if you've got to that point where you've achieved lots of things, you're obviously smart, you obviously can achieve things, you can deliver, you know what you're doing. You've learned the industry, you've learned your profession. And being a leader then is about being yourself because people will follow you if you're authentic. They won't follow you if you're full of bullshit. They won't, they won't follow you if they, if, they, if they spot anything that's not quite right, if they know that you're not saying what you really believe, they won't. So that's really important. You've got to be authentic. You've got to, be, you've got to care for the people that work for you. So many people get into leadership positions and don't care. They've done it for status, they've done it for money, power, all the wrong reasons. Good leaders care about who they work with and they care about creating an environment that people want to work in. If you get people motivated, get people to achieve, and get people to enjoy it, then you're onto a winner. And it's about trying to do that every day. I try and be a better leader every day. Well, I heard a saying, which I quite liked, and I used in a speech last week, which was, success needs three things. Dream big dreams, have fun, and just get shit done. If you follow those three things, you're doing really well. What I've done is chosen Hiscox. So I didn't actually choose the industry. A lot of people fall into insurance, but I like what we do. I like the way we try and work in the right way every day. I like the values we have. I like the integrity and authenticity of his cogs. So that's what I've chosen really, because what I do actually is the same kind of job in every industry. You start to realize I've done 12 different jobs uh, in pretty much 12 different industries, uh, and you notice that the key leadership in as a COO is the same kind of role. So it's about the quality of the business you're in. So it's not really choosing insurance, it's choosing his goals. I haven't reached that yet. I've got this uh, saying that I use in terms of how, how successful people, they're all paranoid overachievers. So we never quite believe we're good enough, we work really hard, we get something done. And then when we've done it, right, I've done that, I'll move on, what's next? So you, you, that's a common theme with a lot of people who run businesses. You can't stop. You just want to move on to the next thing and you just discount what you've done. So I've not achieved what I want to achieve yet. I never thought I'd be made redundant. I thought I was too good for that. But the reality is that forces are often outside of your control. So I found myself in JP Morgan uh, at a time. So I was working as a uh, corporate finance advisor in merchant acquisitions, specializing in technology, at a time when the recession was in finance and IT. So I just got hit. I got hit in the sixth wave of redundancies. And even though you understand it, like I've just explained it, it hurts. It really hurts. It's a, it's a blow to your confidence. You suddenly think you're useless. Uh, if, no matter what anyone says, you've been rejected. They give you a nice bit of money, to, so it's not an issue about that. It's just a personal rejection, and that takes time to get over. I don't think like that. I like the phrase that says that each job is a preparation for the next one. So the reason I am who I am is because of what I've done in the past. It's like a building block. So if you think of it like that, nothing is a regret. It's just, a, oh, I'll try this. How does this work? What happens next? That's how, that's how we live our lives, I think. First thing I'd do is get really good at something. Really good. Focus on proving that you can make a difference and you count. Once you've done that, That'll tell you a bit more about